So I'm getting out to a service call for no heat. The customer called and said how the system keeps kicking into auxiliary heat and not running the heat pump as much. Um, this is a York package unit. It's a heat pump package unit. Um, I've talked about these Yorks quite a bit on other videos, but this one was pretty, uh, pretty impressive with how much ice we got going on on this one. Um, so a couple things on this, if you're, right now the system is running and I'll just kind of show you a little bit, but the blades are, I mean, the ice is literally filled this whole void here. Um, the blades, you can see this, this blade is completely bent and destroyed. Um, they're all locked in place basically. Uh, looks like these blades look okay, but I'm sure that they're bent and out of balance now at this point. So realistically what's gonna have to happen is two new condensing fan motors. I'll do two new blades and doing the defrost sensors. Um, with these defrost sensors on these, the condenser coil sensors um, is actually what I meant to say. Uh, the condensing coil sensors are down in this corner. So clearly everything here would have to thaw before I could do something like that. Um, and those leads are right down in here. I'm in the Pacific Northwest and a lot of times that moisture uh, in those little spade connectors, once it gets moisture in there, it sends poor signals back to the control board, which makes it not go into defrost or read wrong temperatures. Um, so they do have a new lead that I've talked about in plenty of other videos, um, but that lead, I'll reroute it now and bring it all the way back up into the blower compartment. Um, I mean, this is probably the most iced up I've ever seen one of these, but I'll try to make that new connection in here where it should be dry. But I mean, you can see literally I got ice going back all the way to here, um, all the way back into the compressor compartment is literally just filled with ice. Um, realistically, once I get all these repairs done and made, I'm going to have to further evaluate to make sure nothing else is going on with any of their refrigerant circuit and make sure my charge is good and all that kind of stuff. But I've talked about this a lot in my videos. Most of the time I've come out, the ice is already gone and I'm usually just looking at aftermath, the blades and stuff like that. Um, this one has had a couple sensors done and a couple motors done in the past, but that was before I think we were really rerouting everything back. So with that being said, um, this one for sure will be rerouted back and the connection will be made over here. Um, that's kind of what I have to start with and then kind of further evaluate from there. But it's just kind of a, a shitty situation that we run into up here in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're running into sensor failures on these, I mean, I highly recommend getting it taken care of because I mean, now I got, you know, hundreds if not thousands of dollars in condensing fan motors I have to do all for a silly little sensor. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of share this because it was a really prime example. A lot of times you'll see on here, oh yeah, it's showing me some of these sensor failures right now. It's kind of scrolling across, yeah, condenser coil sensor. Um, so you can kind of see that here. And then a lot of time, let me see if I can get to it. I'm gonna try to if I go down to details. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna go down to let's see, service. I'm gonna hit enter. And then I can do input temperature sensors and output. So I'm gonna do inputs. I'm gonna click enter. And then it says coil sensor. I'm gonna hit enter. And then there's the evaporator coil one condenser coil one so i'm gonna go down to this condenser coil yeah it's reading 169.9 right now and it's in eight inches of ice so clearly that is not right um i'm gonna scroll down a little bit more got the other condenser coil sensor and it's reading out of range so now between the two it is definitely uh very messed up so another thing that i know when we a couple of these sites when these springs are first start getting done, I think this is one of the first units of when they kind of change the configuration. Some of the uh, sensors were actually on the wrong loop 
um, over here down there on the condenser coil. It was actually on the temperature. Basically, it was reading a higher temperature than it should. So that's something else I have to verify to make sure. But yeah, it's all kind of stimming though from those condenser coil sensors. So I just wanted to kind of show you briefly how you could kind of scroll through here too. And since I'm in here, I'm just gonna look at my evaporator temperature, 108.6. And 63.3. So, like I said, I don't know what else, what damage this has done, but since it still does have backup heat, I'm basically going to make it so that the compressors stop running and creating the ice to get even worse. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, I mean, feel free to comment down here if you kind of ran into similar things on these Yorks, but. Um, yeah, we've, we've seen it quite a bit. Uh, the company I work for used to put some of these Yorks in and we don't put them in anymore now. So um, I'll let this customer know. Um, I have to actually see when, because we've done some repairs on this. I gotta see how far back we did the repairs and some of this work might end up being warranty. But um, yeah, hope you liked the video and uh, thanks for watching.